by now you've probably heard the incredibly sad news. One of the most important applications in the Linux ecosystem has been abandoned. The developer is gone and the project has been archived for good. That project being NeoFetch. The application that all of us have used at least a couple of times to show off our system specs in screenshots. You know, on that certain Unix subreddit that I don't think I can say yet because it's too early in the video, or you've probably seen it countless times in one of my videos. Or have you? Now, technically, NeoFetch was archived on April 26th, 2024, but I'm genuinely surprised that people are just finding out now the project is abandoned. It wasn't abandoned on April 26th, 2024. The last commit to the project was three years ago, December 10th, 2021. And if it had been abandoned for like, you know, a month, two months, three months, six months even, I would understand that. But there hasn't been any work on it in three years. And nobody had any idea. Maybe it's just that I'm constantly looking at repos and I will keep an eye on things like this, but... People have just assumed that Neofetch was still being developed. Don't worry about the developer, nothing has happened to him, but he's living his best life. He says, have taken up farming. And you know what? I have nothing but respect for that. Now, Neofetch isn't the only application he makes. He also makes FFF, which is a very lightweight file manager, Pfetch, another version of Neofetch, also Pywall. Pywall's been a very popular application for matching your theme to your wallpaper. There are other implementations of this that you can go and find out there, but this was the one that everybody knew about. Now you might rightfully ask, why would a project like NeoFetch actually need to be updated? It's basically feature complete. What would still need to be added? Well, it's mainly just additional icons and things of that nature. For example, Vanilla OS didn't exist when NeoFetch stopped being updated. Another one called Parch Linux, I don't know about that one, but various other little distros had been created since then. Those icons are not present. You might have certain code names being misused on things like macOS and code names that are just completely missing. You might have additional packaging systems that people want to be tracked inside the application. So whilst the core functionality is basically done, it's just little additional things that you might want to slowly add over time. It's very minor additions and they don't need to be there. But when you're using an application like this, the whole purpose is to show off the thing you're using. Another example is no special icon for Windows 11. It will detect as Windows, so it will show a Windows icon, but it won't specifically show Windows 11. Now that NeoFetch is officially dead, does this mean that everything is over? It's going to be pulled from the repos, and you can no longer show your system specs in your screenshots. Well, no. There is a lot of applications in your distro repos that just aren't being updated anymore. And because it's a bash script, it's probably gonna work for a long time into the future until the applications it's calling just no longer work. Also, because NeoFetch was such a popular application and a really easy application to re-implement if you wanna do it as like a first project or you just wanna have a more maintainable version, there is a lot of clones of NeoFetch. Some with a reason to exist, others because it just makes a really good first programming assignment. There is actually a list of them on the NeoFetch Wikipedia page. This is by no means all of them. There are so many others, but as I said, most of them simply do not matter. So I'm going to highlight a couple of them that I think are worth checking out. The first one I want to mention is HiFetch. This is a direct fork of the original NeoFetch repo. If you don't like change, and you basically just want to keep running NeoFetch, but you want to run NeoFetch that is actually being maintained, this is probably the easiest place to go to. Now, it's not exactly the same as NeoFetch. So, originally NeoFetch was an 11,500 long bash script. I have no idea why you'd want to fork that and try to keep going from that, 
but they do still have the near fetch stuff around and it has been updated but a lot of the new stuff is being written in python making it considerably easier to maintain just if your bash script is longer than maybe 200 lines consider a new language outside of pywall most of what dylan wrote was in bash script if not in bash script in POSIX shell script just not nice to maintain like i get it i know people like bash script but there is a limit and i thought it was always really really cool what he was doing with bash script with POSIX shell script but it was just not fun to look at there is one very important difference between near fetch and high fetch the command you're going to use to run it so to make sure it doesn't overlap with near fetch because they do actually ship near fetch they call the high fetch stuff neo wo fetch i'll just let that sit there and of course you can go back to the classic debate do i run screen fetch or do i run neo fetch if you are going to run a shell implementation of a fetch utility, I think it is better to go with high fetch. High fetch is considerably better maintained. Also, there is the Python version, which is going to run a lot faster. Screen fetch is great, and if you've always used screen fetch, no reason to stop using it. But I do think there are better options available now. Now, there is a lot of these fetch utilities, which I'm not going to recommend, just because... They're okay, but they're not really anything special, right? Like, a lot of people write a fetch application as one of their early applications, and people talk about, like, oh, look, it's this, but it's a... Look, it's a Rust implementation. Look, it's a Python implementation. Look, it's a Go implementation. And you'll find a bunch of these, like, ANSI C, One Liner in Java, Pascal, C++, a version for FreeDOS, uh, Pascal again, Perl, more Rust, a different Rust one, Lua, Microsoft PowerShell, but they just kind of exist. If there is one of these that I would absolutely recommend, and this is the one that I am personally using, that would be FastFetch. Every time you see me open up a terminal and you see this, this for a long time now has not been near fetch. I've used various other implementations along the way, but fast fetch is the one that I'm basically going to stick with because there's no reason to actually swap from fast fetch. I think fast fetch is actually the first implementation of near fetch which does everything that I want from near fetch, does it faster, and also has a lot of customization. Plus, it doesn't hurt that it's still actively being maintained. The last commit, 34 minutes ago now. This is written in C. GitHub sometimes detects C kind of weirdly as like Objective-C and C++, but I'm pretty sure this is entirely a C project. One of the first things I noticed when swapping from NeoFetch to any other Fetch implementation not written in Bash is it's considerably faster. NeoFetch, because it was an 11,000 line bash script, took a while to run. It's interpreted, and bash just generally isn't that fast anyway. Then you run a C implementation. It goes from maybe a second to run everything, to the way it works now with fast fetch. I just open the terminal, and it's done. That's how it should work if you're going to be running it every single time. Now, you could argue you probably shouldn't be running the application every time you open the terminal. I don't care, I'm going to do that. And as you can see from the screenshots, there is a lot of ways this can look. You can have all of the information you could possibly want. You can have images being rendered. You can have a very, very minimal layout. You can have minimal, but a bit more information. Or you can just break it down to the text, don't have an icon, just as simple as you want it to be. If you want a good starting point, all of these are available in the presets folder. So if you just don't want to customize anything, you just want something that looks good, this will work pretty well. There is even a preset in here for making it work like NeoFetch or PaleoFetch. So if you just don't like change, that's a good way to do it. Now, as for customizing it yourself, 
if you find the wiki on here, I've right, there's a link at the top, isn't there? If you go to the wiki, then go to the configuration section, all of this is pretty well laid out. So it makes use of a JSON-C configuration format. That might sound fancy, it's just JSON with comments. Just for context, this right here is my entire config. I really haven't done anything that special to it. You can format the data, so if you just don't want certain pieces of data to be present, you can say, okay, I want the data in position 1, but not position 2, 3, 4, so on, or I want position 3, but I don't want position 1. It's really easy to do, and just requires a little bit of tweaking. And if you don't want to start from a completely blank file, but you don't really care about any of the existing configurations, fast fetch dash dash gen dash config will give you the simplest json-c file. It even shows you how to migrate a logo from NeoFetch over to FastFetch if, for whatever reason, the logo is different and you want that logo to also be here. For example, the ThinkPad logo they have here. There is one other project I want to mention, and sadly, this one has been archived, but I still think it deserves a mention. This is the great and powerful Uwu fetch. This is a fetch application with Uwuified logos. I thought I had a screenshot here. It doesn't. This is a fetch application with Uwuified logos because that is the most important thing. So, do you use a fetch application? Do you just use it for screenshots? Do you run it every time you open a terminal like me? What do you do? Or do you think they're weird and don't really get them? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, sleep, bear, pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and fetch this outro.